Things are getting weird in Mid Journey Land. It hasn't been long since 5.2 was released and we've already got a few new features added. I did recently do a deep dive on version 5.2. That link is below if you haven't seen it, but we've already got a pretty cool new feature added to it. It's a pretty weird one and it is aptly named Weird. So we're gonna take a look at that, plus another new feature that was kind of quietly snuck in under the radar. And I'm gonna show you what I think Weird's real superpower is. Okay, let's dive in. So weird, as the name implies, makes things weird. I'd consider it kind of more of an experimental model, but very useful in terms of experimenting when you're looking for new ideas. So let's kick off with an example that I used in version 5.2. And actually I used in version 5.1 as well. This guy is kind of becoming my control factor. It is photograph, long shot, businessman walking down a busy street, blue color palette, at an aspect ratio of 16.9. And now here we are with the same prompt, only now with a weird command issued at a value of 250. It is interesting in that it gives us a variety of images. Uh, it's a little on the unpredictable side. In all honesty, I really actually like that third image. That motion blur and sort of slower shutter speed is something that I really haven't seen a lot of in Mid Journey from 5.1 on. It's something that I have talked about in the past. The aesthetic value and sharpness in Mid Journey lately is getting really, really good. But there are times where I kind of feel that things are getting a little too clean. So it's actually sort of nice to see this. You can issue weird commands with values between zero and 1000. Apparently you can crank it up to 3000. And we are going to take a look at that in a little bit because I mean, you know me, I like to crank my knobs all the way up to 11. At a weird value of 500, we get these images, which um, are very drastically different than our first set. Composition varies pretty wildly at this point. I mean, obviously a bunch of waste shots. Um, I really do like image number two. Again, the head is cut off, but you know, luckily we have the zoom out function now. Running a 1.5 zoom on our blue businessman gives us this image, um, which gives him sunglasses for some reason. Now, I think we can dash dash know that out, um, at least as a workaround until we get in painting, which Mid Journey has discussed us getting at some point in the near future, possibly version six. But what is kind of fun is that you can actually stack a weird on top of a weird by issuing a very and simply running it again, and you basically end up with two weirds at 500, giving us this image, which is definitely further out than our initial blue businessman walking down a street. That kind of ends up looking like a ghost entrepreneur that's selling you spooky NFTs. Where I do think that you kind of get the most juice out of weird is when you use very simple prompts. Like for example, in this, we have nice summer day and an aspect ratio of 16.9, 5.2 gives us this all of which is very lovely, very digital art-esque. Um, so let's start cranking up the weirdness value beyond the recommended daily usage. First at a value of 500 gives us this, which is pretty nice. The first one has that sort of flat folk naive art look to it. I actually really like that. I haven't seen that in Mid Journey in kind of a while. A value of 1000 gives us these images, which are pretty cool. Definitely getting a little bit weirder. That first image definitely looks pretty soft in terms of its sharpness. But that fourth one kind of reminds me of uh, Surratt's A Sunday at the Park, um, at least in style. So yeah, kind of cool. But as we crank it up to 2000, things start getting pretty out there. Like that first one, when you really look at it, it's pretty weird. I think we've all gotten pretty used to the high detail and fidelity of Mid Journey since version five. So it's actually almost refreshing to see this. And then a value of 3000 gets us this super weirdness. Like uh, image two definitely looks like something from the early days of AI art, like the beginning of Dali. Um, but three and four actually look pretty cool. I mean, that looks like something that you might see in a modern art museum. But I do think that there are some interesting applications for going this far out there in terms of weirdness. Like for example, taking this image and upscaling it and then running a very on it putting the prompt photograph in front of it and basically running it through 5.2 again gives us these images, creating this hybrid mixed media version between the painting and the photograph prompt, particularly in image two and image three. Image three in particular, I ended up liking quite a lot. It kind of has this nostalgic retro, like 1950s summer camp postcard vibe to it. And again, by using the very command with photograph at the front of that, we kind of end up with this mixed media composition, which is something that I think is pretty tough to prompt for in mid journey if you're trying to aim specifically for that look. So one way of controlling the weirdness of your weird is to add a stylized to it. For example, if we were to take this image from our nice summer day and roll it simply 
with a weird of 100, we end up with these images. Image one is probably the most workable, but at the same time, I think our initial image looked a lot better than this one. By the time we get to image four, it basically looks like a what if Van Gogh had access to digital painting tools. But if we take that same vary, double the weirdness up to 200 and add a stylized of 1000, we end up with these images, which I think are very nice, particularly that fourth image with the kind of Dutch angle on the canvas. Weird also does work in raw mode. Uh, the trailer for Dune 2 just dropped and I've watched that like 300 time since. So I rolled up cinematic still filmed by Denis Villeneuve scene from Dune at an aspect ratio of 16.9. And we got, you know, Dune-esque images. Running that same prompt and adding in a weird of 100, a stylized of 100, and a chaos of 100, because you can actually add chaos in there as well, gives us these images, which look pretty cool. Very 80s minimalist, um, kind of like Alejandro Jordaeski's version of Dune that was never made. If you haven't seen that documentary, by the way, it's fantastic, high recommend. And there was a pretty interesting tip from Carson Boyd in the comment section of the 5.2 deep dive, and that is that you can actually run values lower than 100 in stylize. According to Midjourney, the stylized default is 100. So if you're running a prompt lower than that, like say at like 50, it's essentially acting as a negative prompt. So trying out a Dune prompt again with a weird of 100 and a stylized set to 50 gives us these images, which I think ends up being a nice hybrid between the heavily stylized 5.2 version and the more minimalist 80s weird version. So here is where I think the real kind of superpower of Weird comes into play. So taking two kings of Weird, HP uh, Lovecraft and HR Giger, mashing them together in 5.2 gives us this monstrosity. Probably leans a little more on the Giger side, but yeah, accurate. Um, so now let's take the weirdness up a notch. Cranking the weirdness up to 500 gives us these images. The first one I think is pretty cool. And the second and the third one sort of remind me of paintings you might see in a 80s role-playing game source book. I don't know, it makes me kind of nostalgic looking at them. So what we can do is take our Giger wiener dog and upscale him and then run a describe on him. A new feature that was apparently kind of quietly added in was this imagine all button. Uh, and if we hit that, obviously it will generate images from each of those four prompts. Um, I'm just gonna take the first one and then I'm gonna run a shorten on it. So shorten is becoming more and more interesting to me every day in that we know that describe is not actually connected to the mid-journey language model, but shorten is. So when you run prompts issued by describe, you can actually find out really what words Midjourney actually knows. For example, in the describe prompt, the word greeble appeared. I did not know what that was. In the shorten, apparently, Midjourney did know what that word was. So I looked it up. Apparently it's a term from Industrial Light and Magic in which you would take a piece from a modeling kit and use that as a detailing element in one of your own models. The kind of kit bashing, I guess. So our shortened version gives us this, which is okay. It looks cool, but is definitely kind of more insectoid than it is wiener dog. So what we can do is take our initial uh, weird image and run that as an image prompt will result in these images, which look like, you know, updated, higher texture, higher detailed versions of that initial weirdness. So let me know what you think of weird. And there is more mid journey stuff coming up soon, including a deep dive into all of the dash dash commands. So please do hit the like and subscribe button if you have not already. I uh, thank you for watching. My name is Tim.